about a 7.8 out of 10, but I think it's got too much water. <laughs> Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. Only for Game Boy Advance. Rated E for everyone. The third generation of Pokemon. Y'all ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. Alright, so what was Gen 3? What games were they? Gen 3 was Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Coliseum, Next to Game of Darkness, uh, Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon Bo Pokemon, Pokemon Pinball, Ruby, and Sapphire. Pokemon Pinball, Pinball Ruby, and Sapphire. Sapphire. Pokemon Box, uh, Mystery Dungeon, 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 Blue and Red Rescue Team, Pokemon uh, Dash. Pokemon I Dash? I think that's what was Ranger Gen 3? Yes, I think the original Ranger was Gen 3, right? No, oh, but did you have the Mana Pia? But regardless, the third generation of Pokemon, where should we start? Should we start? From the beginning of Gen 3? Sure. Definitely. Definitely. Also, welcome to Stuff We Play. You're a source for everything gaming and Canadian. And uh, uh, that sounds cool for you. And Texas. And Corbin. And if that sounds sexy to you, you should probably subscribe. I'm Colin, I'm the staple Argentinian. My name is Kenton, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm definitely the California boy, I guess, but, um, uh, not really. <laughs> I'm Corbin, and I'm just here. Uh, <laughs> we picked him up on the side of the <laughs> Damn me. hitchhikers. <laughs> no, we're paying. Yeah. Uh, and I'm James, and I have a Bulbasaur. <laughs> That's not, oh, dude, that's not Gen 3. No, I mean technically, oh hello, there's a fork on top of that. But that's besides the point. So, from the beginning, Ruby and Sapphire, 2001. 2003. 2003? Oh yeah. In America. No, was it 2003? Yes, yeah, 2002 and 3. So, Gen 3 started with Ruby and Sapphire with effectively the best, legendary, Kyogre, Groudon Lovers, uh, y'all go ahead and unsubscribe from the channel. Thank wow, please <laughs> unsubscribe. <laughs> it brought Pokemon out of the big fat cartridge and into the nice tiny cartridge we all know and love. Like these. With an eat rom uh, die as well. Yeah. And Waterfall. Waterfall. Waterfall was part of Gen 2. Of course, introduced by far the best Pokemon of all time, and that, that of course is Ludicolo. <laughs> Talk about our memories. This is a retrospective after all. The Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald retrospective, even though we're going over the entirety of Gen 3. So, uh, Colin, what's your experiences with these games? When I first moved to the States, at my, on my very first birthday, when I turned 12 here in the States, one of my friends at the time gave me a copy of Pokemon Sapphire, except I didn't have anything to play it on because I didn't, I didn't know Game Boys that existed. So I went out and got my dad to buy me a, a Game Boy Advance SP. The only Pokemon I trained was my Swampert. And he had Surf, Earthquake, Waterfall, and I think like Substitute or something. I think that was everyone's first per Pokemon game. Yeah, I mean, you gotta catch them, but, but I have a starter. Well, um, this is the first um, Pokemon game on the GBA that I got. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because, um, but but I like I didn't get it when it was new, I guess. I got it around, I wanna say like 2000, Four or five, something like that, um, and so I had already had silver for the Game Boy Color for a while, but um, I already owned a uh, GBA SP. I just got the cartridge. I got Sapphire version, so actually I was one of the um, Kyogre people as a kid, but I later learned to love Groudon as well. And, uh, but I don't know. I just thought that the the music was super entrancing and uh, horns. Yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> but every, everything seemed kind of new and um, like a brush and, brush and, yeah, brush. yeah, yeah, because Holland was very green and colorful to me, and so to see more color, I guess, than uh, than on my silver version was really cool. 
And um, it, uh, it, it, this is the game that really brought me into like the whole um, link cable and, um, trading. And, and trading and battling that, that type of thing that you yeah. do with all your friends. That, that's what really solidified it for me, um, even more so than, uh, than Silver version. So um, that's, that's pretty much how I grew to fight some of my friends in elementary school. Yeah. yeah. What about you, James? So, funny thing, I mean, the first Pokemon game I played was Silver, right? First one I owned was Gen 3, but it's one we haven't gotten to yet. But funny thing, it was one of the GameCube ones. It was Colosseum. Is right. that a Mountain Dew I see back there? Yes, it is. I didn't pick up Emerald until after I beat Diamond. Boo. So, like, what, 2008? Uh, probably 2007, because I bought Pokemon Diamond at launch. Okay. And it was the first handheld Pokemon game I'd actually owned. Boo. I was hooked, you know, that shit was like crack. It still is. Yeah. Just and like it, not actually. Right? Yeah, not actually. <laughs> I picked up Emerald, and I picked it up at a Walmart, and when we were on a trip to Los Angeles. Fun. Right. So, uh, yeah, why in LA? I don't know, because I was bored. I was bored. Bored. For me, my first was uh, Sapphire as well. Um, I, I remember I chose Torchic as my starter. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> I was way too try hard at the game, and what I mean by that is I always was paranoid about losing, so I would spend way too much time training. Yeah, that's, I, um, that's how I felt. Before I, I went to the Elite Four, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what the Elite Four was, so I was right. like, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. So I like hung out in that cave in the Elite Four, yeah, but you know, right. just fighting gold bats like, <laughs> repeatedly. And like I got my Blaziken up to like level 85. Jesus <laughs> Christ. And then the Elite Four was just like like upper 40s, lower 50s. Yeah, yeah. So, so to put some preface, the highest Elite Four in, in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is Wallace. He has like a level 59, I think, or like a level 60 Milotic. You yeah. think level 85? <laughs> that was the most boring Elite Four ever. I just yeah, because he swapped it. through it. <laughs> I feel so bad for Sydney and Glacia in the fire fighting. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald was also the first game to introduce the fire fighting type, which is a really good offensive type now. Mm -hmm. But everyone's so tired of it, and I can understand yeah. why. And so they're like, we know we're willing it for Jan 7. So it's guess what? You didn't get it. And you still complain. Because you're like, you look stupid. Uh, you had Mudkip who became a meme yeah. uh, very early. Yeah. You had Trico who uh, admittedly um, was for not bad at everyone. But he's um, still very good. Uh, Trico's real. I'll be honest, I feel like this was definitely the most well rounded starters at this point. Whenever I play through Gold, Silver, Crystal, I always choose Cyndaquil. That's the right choice. Whenever I play through Emerald, it varies. It depends how I want. Like, I legitimately feel like every single starter has its uh, choice, including KFC, which is the third starter. If we can be sort of serious here for a second about this whole water thing, one of the great things actually about Helen having so much water in it is that you get such a variety of Pokemon with you, because maybe that's actually a thing that the other gens were lacking. It's a good amount of water Pokemon that you could add to your team that's if, you, yeah. if you chose the fire types. Okay, Gen 2 added 100 Pokemon to the original Pokedex, raising it to 252, 251. Yeah. yeah. At the end of Hoenn, we had 380, I think? 386. Yeah, it says right here on the cover of this book. I guess on that, let's go into the Hoenn region itself and kind of the world of the game. You know, you know how kind of Sun Moon with the Lola region trying to go for kind of this tropical feeling? Whatnot? Yeah. That's how I felt the first time I played Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Like, yeah. it kind of, it kind of, like, you start off, right, and it feels like any old Pokemon game, right? Yeah, just, uh, And then you kind of realize how coastal it is, you know, how more, it's yeah. more, it's more tropical than uh, the first two generations of games were. And it's, I guess, kind of a bit of a radical departure in ways. I mean, first game's not to have Team Rocket in them. That's true. First original team. Yep, mm -hmm. team Aqua and Magma. Um, you can't go to any regions besides Hoenn. But there's so much of Hoenn, it, that didn't feel like a bad, like a necessity. Yeah. Well, because once again, in, in Gold and Silver, you were like in your level, like level 40 or something by the time you reached the first Elite Four. Right, you were, the level cap was lowered so much in Gold and Silver because they had to, you couldn't be at level 55 fighting Lieutenant Surge who only has a level 17 Raichu or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They introduced really cool new rivals. I like Mei. They actually fleshed out a rival instead May of just Silver and Gary. I mean, Gary's a douchebag and Silver's 
Giovanni's kid. Ugh. But like, May is May. May is, May is Professor Birch's daughter, and like, she. All right, but let's be honest here. She does jack crap after Lily Cove. Well, that's the point. That's the point. I. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. She she doesn't go on to fight Lily Ford because she she decides to help her dad with research. Yeah. That yeah. that that the whole point. But that's when Wally becomes the more fleshed out yeah, rival yeah. when you fight him at the end of Victory Road with his level eight with his level fifty-five Gardevoir with Psychic and Calm Mind and it's disgusting. No day night system anymore or visible one? There is no that visible was the day main night. disappointment, but it's like at that point you had so many other things to look for. They added the overworld night. weather. Yeah, like, the yeah, rainy yeah, weather was overall. cool. Like what was that one route where it's like a rainy route one nineteen and one mm-hmm. no no one twenty had the puddles in it. And then apparently in the, there's a, an unused snow weather effect. Really? Yeah. That's well, interesting. Well, but I mean, they already had the, the ash part, which pretty much are the Yeah, like yeah. Snow, right before yeah, Fallon 13, yeah. What did y'all think of the adventure? What do you think of the characters outside your eyeball? What do you think of Team Aqua and Team Magma? I feel like in Oras, they gave the enemy team a lot more life because yes. In Ruby Sapphire and Emerald, the admins of Team Aqua and Team Magma had just, they, didn't, they only had special sprites, not special overworld sprites. I mean, they, I felt like they did the job, but it's just another evil team. Yeah, just another bad guy. I'm like, uh, I, I found there was an interesting dynamic how, depending on the version, one was good guys, one was bad guys, or in Emerald, they were both kind of their own thing. Well, yeah, I like the way that Emerald portrayed it the best because I didn't really like how. It's like you were supposed to view one of them as good and one of them as bad because it's like they're both insane. Well, well, what, what what I picked up was that one of them wasn't. They weren't necessarily good or bad. They were just trying to stop the other one because of their ideas. Like in if, in Ruby, if Team Magma wants to create land and Team Aqua's main goal is to expand the ocean, lo and behold, in Team in Ruby they have access to ground on them like. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they have to put all their efforts to stop Team Magma, and vice versa in Sapphire. That's right. why in Emerald, when they made the main focus of the game not the boss legendary, not Ruby or Sapphire, but the, the trifecta, the Rayquaza, yeah. it, it allowed for each team, instead of having to fight each other all the time, they would cross paths trying to reach their own goal. And I found that to be very interesting. Yeah, it was fun to fight them on Mount Pyre with all the little pieces. Yeah, 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 that's actually one of my favorite parts for some reason. Mount Pyre is really interesting because in Ruby and Sapphire, the enemy team takes the orb not corresponding to them. Like, Team Aqua takes the red orb, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Team Magma takes the blue orb. But in Emerald, you're sh- I won. They took both orbs. So you're like, great, now I can't... T- so that forces you to look outside the orbs for for Rayquaza for like the answer to the solution. Uh, I guess since we're talking about it, Emerald is the best version of these games by far. If you're gonna play through Gen 3, play Emerald. You've mastered every Pokemon move. Sleep Powder. Ready for the all new Battle Frontier. Take on your biggest challenge yet in Pokemon Emerald, only for Game Boy Advance. Let it be for everyone. I guess, historically speaking, Emerald came a bit after Ruby and Sapphire. That was what, 2005? Mm-hmm. Came out two years after Ruby and Sapphire. I mean, it has more, more stuff to do. Uh, oh, yeah. Battle. yeah, Battle Frontier. Fantastic. I loved Battle Frontier. Did you play the Battle Frontier? I, I did not. I played bits and pieces, but not fully through. I remember the in the in the Battle Factory, the one that you can rent Pokemon. If you had a Game Shark and you could <laughs> use the teleport glitch, you could steal the level 100 Pokemon from the Battle Factory. Um, so like, I would just like walk in with an Oddish and walk out with like a level 100 the Champ, a lot of <laughs> like a Reggie Rock. I used to do that. Emerald had a cloning glitch as well. That's true. Yeah. I remember I cloned my Lily, pulled me the XP share 14 times. Uh, I I got 27 Kyogres. <laughs> <laughs> Just flipping through your boxes, like, hey, Kyogre's, and they're all just like, Burr. Gen 3 also revamped the box system to where it didn't look like garbage anymore. That's true, it had the little itty bitty sprites. Yes. The ones, yeah. the party sprites. Yeah. They also gave each Pokemon their individual party sprite instead of just, like, the clamshell for the yeah. clamshell yeah. or whatever. Well, we talked about the game, we talked about the story. Let's talk mechanics. Abilities oh, yeah. were introduced. 
You had Kyogre, who could summon rain. You had Groudon, who could summon the sun. And you had Ludicolo, who had thighs. Ludicolo, who had bait and baseball <laughs> in hands. Shedinja with Wonder, Wonder Guard? That's, That's still the only yeah. Pokemon with Wonder Guard. Well, and was, was that like the only time when, when you could like get a Pokemon in a special way? Uh, kind of. It's the only, so here's how you get a Shedinja. Shedinja yeah, yeah. evolves from Ninkada. Yeah, Ninkada, which yeah. When, if you have a spare Pokeball and a spare slot in your party, you evolve an Ninkada into Ninjask. Uh, because it's like a cocoon, the Shedded Cocoon takes up that a uh, free party slot and becomes Chet Ninja. Yeah, it becomes a bug ghost type. And has only one HP, but has Wonder Guard, which means no physical attack moves can No, it means it can only be hit by super effective moves. That's what it is. That reminds me, did you ever see the beta design for uh, Blaziken? I have not. So originally Blaziken and Latias of all things were the same Pokemon. Really? Wow. So Latias would have been just this big flying chicken. Ruby Sapphire and Emerald introduced more than just a trifecta of legendaries in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald. You have the Regis, Rock, Steel, and Ice, but they also introduced Latios and Latias. They had the fabled Deoxys and that really annoying, hard to get legendary Jirachi, which I remember all the time as a kid looking up like YouTube videos how to get Jirachi and you had to like talk to the Wish Stone and he did it for 150 times so you get Rock oh, and Steel in space. You mean. Or you could use this disc. The only way to get Jirachi. We'll go into this disc, but long story short, this is a GameCube disc that you got for pre-ordering Pokemon Coliseum, which could pretty much poop out free Jirachis to your Game Boy. <coughs> yeah. But we'll go into that when we get to Pokemon Coliseum. Uh, using Music. horns! <laughs> Water, 95% Zigzagoon, and 14,000% Brass Horns. What trumpet, trombone, on brass sections. Bass. Yeah, yeah bass. it's fine. I, I, it. I don't know why everyone was overreacting about the horns. I mean, it was like, okay, usually what I heard was positive. It was like, yeah, horns and stuff like that, but it's like, I don't know. I, I, I just I thought it was always good music. I mean, yeah. uh, What's it, Slateport City? That that wasn't quite a huge horn on that. Oh, that, that, yeah, that one was bells. Yeah, bells. So I guess not so much horns as are bells technically brass? So is that like they brass be. percussion? They can be, yes. So yeah, I like the soundtrack. Oh, you know what we've missed? What? Contest. That's true, they had a contest. I, I contest. like contests. Yes. yes. Especially yes. in, in Oras, they're a lot more fun. In my in my yeah. personal opinion, they made contests super duper fun because you remember in the contests, the the more the more moves you use that match the type of contest yeah. you would do, you would raise the audience's meter. Yeah. And you would even you'd either get screwed over or screw everyone else over. Yeah. If you use a Pokemon that can mega evolve in a contest and you raise the audience meter to the top. The Pokemon will Mega Evolve. Really? Do its like super special move. If it wasn't the end of the contest, you still had more moves to use, it would um, gain extra hearts because it's a Mega Evolve Pokemon. Do you know who really loved contests? Oh. Uh, Elliot, my bae. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Big on the contests. I mean, they're fun. They just yeah. use Pokeblocks. I was never yeah. huge on them. I, I like the, the mini game for Pokeblocks, was I remember. It's like a timer, and it goes around in a circle, and you have to like press the A button when the when the when the two dials match. Mm -hmm. And you, right. you, could, you could play with NPCs or with friends. Yeah, they automated it more in for us, which is kind of a shame, but whatever. Uh, let's see. There's contests. There's uh, they added the two different bikes, the acro bike and the mock bike. Why couldn't we just have one bike? Because the acro bike is for the most swag in the boys. You can hop down the street or oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But bikes are for peddling, they're for hopping. And if you wanted to go as fast as Sonic, you'd just hop on the mock bike and go yeah. meow. Sky Pillar was annoying. Sky Pillar where you had to use you had to use the mock bike. And I remember reading that if you were fast enough you could hop across little little falling grounds. No. Oh my no, god, you can seriously? Hop yes. That's Game what. facts, please. Or, or wiki answers. Yeah, yeah, wiki answers! I remember those days. Kuchina. Beautifly, Shroomish, Torchic, Draco, Latios, Latios. Uh, no, um, Corfish, 
Mudkip, Kecleon. Zigzagoon! Makahita. Wilmer. What's happening, Pikachu? Pikachu? Lotez. Tickleypuff. Blah, blah. Blaze again. Rated E for everyone. Now let's talk about, no, wait, first we gotta talk about the last big mystery of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. The breeding! Oh. Yeah, you can make your Pokemon have babies. <laughs> you can make a Skitty with a Whalelord. Skitty and Whalelord. Hold on, I'm looking at this video here. Oh, okay, Whalelord is 47 feet and 7 inches long and weighs 878 pounds. Skinny is like a little cat that you see your <laughs> which, grandmother's which, house. Which <laughs> technically, technically, Waylord can technically fly. So, what are you going to say? The post game? The post game Grail Mysteries for the Reggies was one of the coolest okay. things in a video game ever. They added a, an alphabet for visual braille, which, if I remember correctly, you needed to use like Rock Smash in front of something. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, yeah, it'd be in a specific yes. spot and use Rock Smash. Yeah, and it's like you didn't even realize that the HMs were actually doing anything other than just setting the internal flags because it's like, you, it's like who would ever think to do that? And what was it like? Can you get like a, a, like a relic camp in your party? Yes, yes. you needed to have a Wayward in the front slot and a relic camp yeah. in the back. And for some reason, those two Pokemon opened the door, which then opened the door to all the other Regis, which also had their own puzzles. Regis's one was you had to walk around the perimeter, the perimeter yeah. of the room twice, then use yeah. Flash. I, I remember for the one where you had to walk around the perimeter twice. Yeah. yeah. I kept doing it, like, I was at school trying to get it. Yeah. And I couldn't get it. Then one of my friends picked it up first try, I got it. Wow. I was, what a, I was, what a so, punk. I was so heated. Should have punched me. <laughs> so, final thoughts on Ruby Sapphire on Emerald before we move into the remake. Hi, Cuckoo Clock. Really good games to start the series off. Emerald more so. Very, no yes. very nostalgic to us because that's just kind of what we grew up with. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still gonna be my favorite region because like I grew up, I grew up in Hoenn, I guess you could say. Yeah. I'm like, can't do oh, gold silver crystal. <laughs> Why would you say gold silver crystal are better games? Because I will agree with you on that, but I want to hear your reasons. Well, for one, the day night cycle really pushes that for me, even though it, it you know, it, it that's puts cool. It, puts it straight yeah. on the battery. But I think I like the the Johto region just a whole lot better. The Johto region and, and the, the kind of countryside while still having a major city to go to makes it feel so, like it, it just reminds me at home, I guess. It has this very warm feeling. And also, um, I feel like it's more about your own independent journey to find this guy who's the champion and to, and to see if you can stand up against him rather than it being this whole kind of intertwined big old thing with um, with Team Aqua and Team Magma. I, I feel That's like it's true. more of yeah. like a, a journey for oneself rather than just like, hey, I, I moved this new place and now I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> My name, I came my name back is with, uh, Seth. Bre my name's Brendan and I like hentai. Generation 3 didn't stop with Ruby Sapphire and Emerald. Well, wait, they, what about our thoughts? You don't get thoughts. Yeah, no, I mean, I got the kind of agree with everything over there. I got nothing. Yeah, um, you're on my side. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I was going to agree with what Kenton said. He was saying, I love the setting of Ruby Sapphire and Emerald, and I think it's great, but can I just talk about what steamed me to hell when, when Ru Ruby Sapphire and Emerald came out? When I yeah, first played it. No. You see, here's what I did after I beat Diamond. I went back, I got blue version, I think yellow later on, and I played them. Then I got silver for myself, and I went through and beat it. Uh -huh. So I was like, cool, well I've transferred all my Pokemon up, I'm sure I can do that when I go and play Emerald. No! You can't transfer up, and this is the only game in the series where you can't do that. With the exception of if you buy the 3DS releases, in which case, you can transfer your Pokemon from uh, the red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, crystal ports of 3DS directly to uh, Sun and Moon. Well, I was going to say, maybe that segues us into the yeah, fire Yeah, let's segue us yes. very well. But so. instead, let's segue into some different remakes. How would you pronounce it? Out. Anything other than Oras. <laughs> May of 2014? Wait, what about May? May yeah. of 2014. Yeah, what about her? Yeah, what about her? 
the month of May in 2014, I remember we got a 20 second ad from Nintendo, blazing horns with Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon, a 20 second short that was, it was like see you in November, or see you in and October. I, I remember this, we were still in high school. We were still in high school? Yeah, we, we were lived shit. stuff. Ow. Well, Hoenn, Hoenn was coming back full force in 3D with I, get, I remember it because I got you this for your birthday. Yeah, I was the best boy you ever Later we learned new Mega Evolutions for the starters. Mega Swapper, Mega Septile. He's got the he shoots tree, he shoots trees off his tail. And he's a he's a grass dragon Did type. You know about oh, it's Mega Rayquaza. Oh, oh, still, problem. still, what, still the most powerful Pokemon stats wise today. Stats wise, right. eight seventy five. Wow, that's disgusting. So here it is. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire remade in 3D on the 3DS based off the X and Y engine. It was supposed to be the ultimate remake, so I was disappointed. James was disappointed. He could cry over there, whatever. Over here, we're gonna talk about how great they were. Reintroduced contests to younger kids. It made these younger kids who have gotten to Pokemon maybe at Gen 5 and 6 relive, in my opinion, the best generation. They brought back tons of Mega Evolutions. They made some really deserving Pokemon. Made Mega Mawile is broken. Mega Sableye is broken. These really sh**. Mm -hmm. Where's Mega Wailord? Mega Wailord is already Mega. To make a Mega Wailord would be insulting to how Mega Wailord already is. Please. Exactly. He's 47 feet long and can fly. <laughs> Not big <laughs> enough. They also introduced the Fairy type to the Hoenn region, which was much needed. Mawile became a better Pokemon. Mawile just got a huge boost. Altaria became a better Pokemon. Mega Altaria is a dragon fairy type, and he's a big fluffy cloud of joy. Oh, yeah. uh, we already talked about that the evil teams are better here. Yes, My they made that. they made the evil teams. They made Team Magma and Team Aqua much better. They added the Delta episode with Zinnia, so one of the catchiest battle. Fighting fights. Deoxys in space. Okay, On that the was back cool. Of your Mega Rayquaza. Yeah, you fly Rayquaza into space so you can fight Deoxys and destroy a meteor. Dude, that was the, the, they completely messed up the pacing. That's true. Oh no. I'm that's sad. why. That's why I don't like. You see. Now I'm sad. You see, Ruby <laughs> Sapphire. Pokemon's all all the Pokemon games are pretty linear, with kind yeah. of the exception of like Kanto and the. Johto Johto can be seen. It's not linear. Yeah. But yeah, like, the, yeah, but these, like, Pokemon General is pretty linear, it's pretty point A to point B, but there were some spots in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire where they would literally if just stop the game and be like, like, I remember one that there was this island where they're like, Latius, Latius, or yes. like, stops the game, sends you to this island, I don't think there are any, even any wild Pokemon or anything. No, they, like, sent, they sent you to, to, what's the name of the island? I will agree that section of the game seems very shoehorned in because it's right after you beat uh, Walt. What's his name? No, it's right Watson. After you, Watson. Right, right after you beat Watson. No, no, no. It's right after you beat your dad. You can cross the gap between Marvel City and uh, the next route, route. I think 119. And right there, you find in the original games that's your second top with Steven, and he gives you. I think he gives gives you like. He gives you an HM in the original game, which felt very shoehorned, and I will agree, because the game just halts right there. Because it's like, you're on a roll, you just beat your dad in a Pokemon gym fight, which is very hard in that Yeah, one. that's for the uh, grand art. Uh, the whole thing we're fighting your dad, no matter what game. They gave, they gave your dad stuff. a name and a face, and he's important. He is enormous. Your mom's not, you're not, your mom's not screwing Professor <coughs> Oak anymore. What's the town we fight? Um, it's the fire type girl. Flannery. Flannery. In Lava Ridge Town. So normally afterward, after you beat that, you'd have the option, that's afterwards you have to go fight Norman, correct? Right. Oh, and May's there, and she yeah. takes you straight back yeah. to Flannery. Yeah, well in the original, normally what you do is you actually go up and you cross through like Meteor Falls and stuff. Yes, and then you have to walk back down to Rustboro. And uh, the reason I like that, I'm sorry to keep it around. No, that's fine, that's fine. Is in the original, I never have to level up much before fighting Norman, because because I was forced to go walk that way myself. Yeah, you naturally gained levels, exactly. but there was they added the X and Y hand holding problem. They didn't do it as bad in Borats in my opinion. But it was still pretty bad. In, in those in those crucial sections where they give where May gives you the, the option to fast travel. It's, but here's the thing, it's the option to no, fast travel. It's not an option. Yes it is. It's not an option. Yes it is. It's forced. We're gonna go we're gonna we're gonna go play it back. We're gonna go find a copy of Borats. I, if I remember correctly, May says, come on, let's go back to Petalburg. And you can say no, 
but she will still be there if you want to go back. That I think that's how it is. And now with the power of post-production editing, we will freeze on this frame and tell you if this is true or not. As Nintendo begins to take on new forms, it's important that we can measure how addictive they truly are. The new Game Boy Micro. Extremely portable. Extremely stylish. <laughs> Instead of nitpicking about BS and some uh, uh, remakes, let's talk about some different remakes. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all people within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend their reach to the stars above. Surrender now or prepare to fight. There's a new way to battle Pokemon, and it's wireless. Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Leaf Green are here, and now you can collect, train, and battle in a whole new way, only for Game Boy Advance, rated E for everyone. So, Generation 3 also included Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. And, oh, this isn't Fire Red and Leaf Green. This is a bootleg. This is Pokemon Chaos Black, but it's essentially Fire Red. <laughs> we entered the dark ages of Pokemon. In between Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, Pokemon made the biggest mistake of their life and released, objectively, the two worst games in the franchise. What? Oh, really? Yeah. The it's worst so games so in the franchise. Cool. Worse than X and Y, but X and Y were trash. But it's even trashier. <laughs> What? Bad music, uh, let's see, um, making you think there's gonna be, a, a, like a Johto, a Johto part, like an extended Johto. Well, it's a city island! Exactly, I which like have Johto one. music and are lame, and what, unlock another PC feature? Oh joy, Bill was too busy jerking off to <laughs> actually give us something decent in his PC. He's an asshole! And what, almost no new content really? Like, that be on the thing, no day and night cycle. The the dialogue isn't really changed at all from the- I like shorts, they're really comfy and easy to wear. Uh, I disagree with you, I think okay. that- Go ahead. Not as good as Heart Gold Soul Silver, but I think those, those, are, those, are, the the those are the remakes. gold standard for Pokemon remakes. Exactly. But these are fantastic remakes because they added enough. So here's the funny thing about Leaf Green. Uh, I had a North American copy. I would fire it now. I don't know what happened by Leaf Green. I think it got stolen with a lot of my other games when I was a kid. But oh, man. So this copy of Leaf Green, what was weird was I was on a trip to Singapore. And it's a North American copy and I bought it sealed new in box. But I bought it while in Asia. But it's official. I, I had I like it opened it up and, and crap later on before it got stolen. If we're talking how bad of a remake Fire Red and Leaf Green is, I think that they weren't marketed very well, I don't think. They had badass marketing. Most of the thing was like the Team Rocket motto while they're on a bridge of... Oh, the first games in the series have wireless trading, right? If you bought Fire Red and Leaf Green New, it came with the thing that you attach a top and you could battle and trade Pokemon wow. wirelessly. That's pretty cool. Wow. But I think when they, when they, what the, the purpose was for re-releasing Fire Emblem Green was when we talked about the great console, the great cartridge catastrophe. Right. They needed to get, they needed a way to bring back their 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 lovingly Gen One Pokemon book. But that's the most original Green. Pokemon, like Voltorb. Uh, yeah. What I liked about Fire Emblem Green though is. I'd say it's a definitive way to play the Gen 1 games because, let's be honest, as cool as it is to have them on the 3DS and whatnot, uh, you're still playing games that are completely unbalanced unless you're playing the Gen 3 versions. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I enjoy having a Rapidash that just hits fire spin and crits every time because it's so fast. 
fire red leaf green felt more like what red and blue were intended to be. That's fair. Because right. they were less glitchy, it was smoother, you had abilities. You and had berries. Yeah, you had so. berries, you had items. It was literally just Pokemon, red or blue, or I guess red and green, but what about water and blue? So maybe they weren't the best remakes because they were technically the first attempt at Game Freak to remake a Pokemon that's game. True. I think that's why Fire Red Big Green left such a bad taste in your mouth, and I'm sorry it's because okay. that's how I played Gen One the first. I see. So that's what I remember Gen One. Okay. Yeah, I played Fire Red Big Green, but I never played the originals. Yeah, so well, I never well, really. Was, I, my vote. I never really viewed them as a remake when I was playing them. I, I guess Exa that is exactly what they were going for. Yeah. They're not remakes. They're just. Fire Red update. Blue Green. It was an update. update. So, okay, there you go. Yeah. Compared to Heart Gold Souls Over, oh, best <laughs> makes in the series. Way better than Oras. And also, Gen 3, oh, transitioning to Gen 3, were the first Pokemon games to come to console. We will get our Pokemon back! Who will save the Pokemon? Gotta save them. Gotta save them now. You can save the Pokemon, gotta save them. Some Pokemon have fallen under the spell of an evil organization, and you need to snag them back, make them good again, and train them for battle. Their newest adventure, now in 3D, Pokemon Coliseum, only for Nintendo GameCube. Rated E for everyone. GameCube. This was the first Pokemon game I owned myself. Okay, let Let's me see. go. Right. So I had a cousin who got this for Christmas. And I was like, yeah, a Pokemon that fits gay. And I saw it and I was like, what the f is this? Pokemon 3D? I get, I can watch that little Marsh Top guy you surf and it's all in 3D. And I need this. What's that? There's Shadow Pokemans. There's Evil Pokemans. There's and Team Snagum. There's a Lugia that's all black and scary. So let's talk. So and let's, sequel. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Who here has played this? Raise Not your hand. Me. I've never played this. I don't know who's played this. Yeah, because I, I played this. Sequel, I can't remember. Okay, so this is one of the best games on the GameCube. And I will say that. If you own the GameCube and you don't own this is game, it better, you're missing out. Is it better than Twilight Princess on the GameCube? Yes. So it's better than Windmaker. No. But <laughs> it's good. It's a good game. Uh, it's only about a 12 hour adventure. It's short and average Pokemon game. Uh, I'll go over into that. Well, First things first, so how would I get this? Uh, like many things I got for Christmas. And this isn't my original disc. I, I forget how you got this. You said you had to pre-order it. Yeah, yeah, I think you had to pre-order it. Yeah, you had to pre-order it. And in Japan, it gave you a Celebi. In North America, it gave you a Jirachi. And it also had like a trailer for Colosseum and stuff, even though you had to pre-order the game to get the, get the disc. <laughs> it's such a weird place to start. I wouldn't recommend you start with Colosseum. Not, unless unless, unless you click. What was weird is I didn't actually have a way to connect it to a, a Game Boy Advance or anything until actually a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's what only then did I transfer stuff from my old memory card, right? So instead of capturing Pokemon in the wild, there are no wild Pokemon. You're in the Ori region, which is the bloody desert. The Ori. The Ori. The Ora, the O R R E, O R A, and there's the Team uh, Snagum, and there's Cipher, which is the organization. It's taking Pokemon, and they say turning, closing the door to our, It's turning Pokemon evil through science. You go around fighting trainers and stealing Pokemon. Correction, you steal back the Shadow Pokemon that are corrupted by evil. Okay. Game Freak does not condone that to Pokemon. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? You're still stealing them back. Shut the f up. <laughs> it was the only way for a while to get Gen 2 Pokemon in newer games. Uh, like, I know if you beat Mount Battle, which is a big string of 100 battles, uh, you got. Oh, you got. I forget. If you do it one way, you get Ho Oh, and if you do it another, you get uh, the three Johto starters. Oh, God. oh wow. Yeah, well, it's a short adventure. It has an underrated soundtrack. It looks a little dated nowadays because obviously it's a GameCube game. We need an HD re release for the Switch, Nintendo, Pirate Genius Sonority. Oh, well, back I made a video called Top 5 Games and Want Forward to the Switch. And yeah. among like the Persona 5s and whatnot, like legit, this game and its sequel, but mostly this one, Coliseum's a better game, even though Colise uh, XD has more features and stuff because Coliseum just has a better story. Yeah. Like it's the only Pokemon game where your main character is an adult. Yeah, it's pretty much the truth. Uh, XD has 
uh, the mechanics a little better, but Colosseum is a better story. Like, Colosseum, what's weird is, like, it's weirdly dark for a Pokemon game. Also, you, yeah. Someone gets beat up by a Makuhita at one point. Jesus Christ. And then we get to the sequel. Which XD, XD, D, 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 Gale of Darkness. Darkness has fallen over the land of Ore. <laughs> Unravel the mystery of Shadow Lugia. Battle your way across a vast land to purify the Shadow Pokemon before it's too late. Experience the extra dimension of Pokemon XD Game of Darkness, an all-new 3D role-playing adventure, only for Nintendo GameCube, rated E for everyone. My favorite game you've played. One of my favorite games is on that the GameCube. Game? Yes. Shadow yeah, Lugia? Shadow yeah. Lugia. Yeah. Okay, I have played that. That is, that is the final boss fight. That's PM. Actually, all it's legendary the... birds. Yeah. Right? Well, actually, the fight with Shadow Lugia is the is the second to last boss fight. It was so so good, not as good, and uh, I have a couple reasons. Okay. It's a little more lighthearted this time because you're back to playing as a kid. Yeah, that's true. But on the flip side, the Ori region is bigger. Uh, like, and you have stuff to do. Like, you have mini games. There's like Battle Bingo, uh, the Battle Simulators, and all that. Yeah, Battle Sim. Uh, battle Sim was how like people learned to, like competitively battle and yeah. stuff back in the day. Because literally, it was like a hundred discs you collected throughout the game, and it would teach you how to competitively battle. Yeah, in the it, game. it would. It would give you like little tips, like, oh, if you want to use the move Focus Punch more effectively, put up a substitute first. You yeah. know, you find a Pokemon substitute, then you do Sub Focus Punch, which was one of the which was a very common tactic. Back yeah, then. or even so, just simpler stuff like, hey, do you have a Pokemon that's not flying type and you're in a double battle and you want to use Earthquake? To go for it. <laughs> you teach that, that other dude Protect or something. Yeah. Like just simple stuff like that, which it was cool to learn, right? Also, don't forget, most of the battles in XD and Coliseum were double battles. They were all double battles, I all think. All of them? Yeah, mm -hmm. the vast majority. Mm -hmm. No, not all of them, because you could still fight uh, uh, like single members of the, the bad guys. No, no, those are all Cyber, double battles. Every single battle is a double battle. Even the grunts? Yeah. Huh. I Fantastic know. battle for the Coliseum. Yeah. And also Mirror B. Yeah, the battle of six little we columns. Didn't, we yeah. didn't talk about double battles. Oh, yeah. We're, we're talking about them now. in Gen 3. Yep. Yeah, and, and how they oh, pretty yeah. much became the star the star of the XD and Coliseum uh, franchise. Yeah, I think it's good we're talking about them here since they are so prominent there. Yeah, and I think, I, I don't know, it, it almost made me uh, pretty much just get used to them in general. Not to mention if you uh, hooked up your good. your game voice to them or if you did a little quick battle option, they would all be on um, double battles. And it was a good way to, like, um, I don't know, I, I guess learn how to strategize during those because some of my friends and I would always do the quick battles and, and if, if you had the quick ones then you, uh, you were assigned random Pokemon so it was, oh, it was always good cool. to try experiment. Well, I like too about double battles is just because the principle of you have two Pokemon out at once, they always yeah. kind of went faster in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, the yeah. battles were definitely, maybe that's why Colosseum and XD are such shorter games because yeah. the battles weren't as long. Plus no wild battles. Well, that's they true. did introduce them back in Colos, uh, no, in XD. XD. Yeah, like yeah. focus spots. Focus like. spots. And what you did was instead of catching, this was cool, you left bait. Yeah. And you had to bait the Pokemon. And like you'd have this little thing that would go off whenever a Pokemon attacked. Yeah. Except sometimes it wasn't actually a Pokemon battle. Mm -hmm. Because two Gen 4 Pokemon were introduced in XD. Bonsly and Munchlax. Munchlax. And Munchlax would eat all your fing Pokemon bait. <laughs> Here B, it was Michael Jackson. He had a Pokeball afro. He was really cool. It was amazing. Gen, Gen 3 was kind of like the king of spin-offs because not only did they introduce XC and Coliseum, they introduced uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Channel, Channel! One of my favorite games of all time. Wait, then, all right, so, so, on, so, on, so on. Corbin, I have a question. When yes. you sit down in front of the TV to play a video game, what could you be doing also with that TV if you weren't playing a video game? Watching TV. That's right, Hell so what yeah. about a video game about watching TV? 
With the Pikachu! That's perfect. Man, I have half the mind so much throw this out. <laughs> this game, okay, obviously this game was made for someone like me when I was that age, because I was eight, nine years old. We had the no professor Oak no. oh, a besoin de votre aide. Le professor Oak a besoin de votre aide. Uh, le réseau Pokémon est, uh, est une um, de télé diffusion qui présente en variété de programmes de Pokémon et qui vous a choisi comme <laughs> tout premier public. Avec l'aide de Pikachu et d'autres Pokémon, vous pouvez faire le réseau Pokémon uh, le plus populaire sur votre télévision. Wow! wow. <laughs> For those wondering, um, it's not a it's not a French copy. I just live in Canada. Both my channels are great. You can watch TV with Pikachu. Yeah, and it had the exclusive Pikachu, Pikachu Bros Party Panic, which was a uh, short that I Ooh, watched. Was that the one where they had like the rod yeah. that made the Pokemon dance? Uh, Continuing on, <laughs> spin-off games. We've got Mystery Dungeon, the very first. Oh, no, let's talk no about huge Pokemon games. Whoa. Whoa! Come on! We got rescuing to do! Introducing the newest Pokemon. You! For the first time ever, you're a talking, battling Pokemon in the adventure Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. Only for Nintendo DS. Rated E for everyone. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team, also available for Game Boy Advance. Uh, Mystery Dungeon, uh, Red Rescue Team, Blue, Blue Rescue, Rescue Team. The, were those the first Pokemon games with the ear that or Pokemon Dash, which is terrible. Pokemon Dash is on, the, is on the DS. We don't talk about Pokemon Dash. I enjoy Pokemon Dash. So, uh, Pokemon yeah, Mystery Dungeon, Dungeon, Red Rescue Team, which we yeah. have here, I actually own two copies. Uh, one's actual kiosk demo that you find if you want to sample the game at like, like a Target or, or GameStop game or whatever. Right, yeah. So this game's more of like an action RPG. It's a, it's a dungeon crawling action RPG. It's that? literally, it has dungeon in the name. Mystery Dungeon <laughs> is actually a game series made by Spike Chunsoft who is uh, also known for making the Danganronpa series. So basically you get turned into a Pokemon, you're originally a human, and you have to stop the apocalypse in Red, Red, in, in Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team, it's a giant meteor falling from the sky, which people have theorized is the meteor from Oras, if you didn't wake up Rayquaza. That's a fun little f put on your tinfoil hat, it's time for this theory, and also, there is the meanest Pokemon in the world. It's a Gengar. He's a piece. Of shit. One of the main plot points in the uh, plot points in the in the game is that if you touch the Nine Tails' tails, you get cursed for a thousand years. And later you learn that Gengar is the one who's who has been cursed. But he puts it off as if you were the one who was cursed, and you ended up killing your partner Gardevoir. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. No, that's horrible. <laughs> So later you learn it's Gengar, and Gengar does have a redemption arc. Yeah, so he, he redeems himself, he's, the, he's part of the Team Meanies. So, oh, so threatening. By a Metacham, a Metacham and Ekans, and, a, and Gengar as their team. Um, what, what else was a pretty good... Uh, the soundtrack and yeah. Yeah, that Red was Red good. was great. They also introduced Lucario. Uh, oh yeah? And the, on the back of that guy, you can see one of the reversible posters is... There's a, there's a sage, po like this, the... the Alakazam. The Alakazam is like a mentor Pokemon to you, and he tells stories of the greatest mystery dungeon explorer, Lucario, who is so famous, if you have X amount of like mystery dungeon points, like you have the rank of your exploration team, the highest rank is Lucario rank. At, I think it's right. like 50,000 yeah. exploration points or whatever. Cool little nod to the Gen 4 games, which were only a year release after Mr. Dungeon. They came out in 2006. What yeah. I loved about them was just the gameplay. It was so refreshing, right? I remember they made some moves really broken, like Smokescreen. Mm -hmm. That game is disgusting. They made every move by the opponent's Pokemon miss. Yeah. It was yeah. gross. What I especially loved about though, and can, can we be honest about this? Yeah. If you like Pokemon, but you don't like typical Pokemon games, then play it Dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like if you think, or if you think your average Pokemon game is too, you no, know, too much like an old score RPG, too slow, and I know people like that, and there's nothing wrong if you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Give Mystery Dungeon a try. It it's doesn't fast, matter. It's fun. The dungeons are randomly generated. It's different every the time. The only you play Mystery it. Dungeon game you shouldn't play is Gates to Infinity. I've heard nothing but bad things about that game. Oh, really? They took away the personality test. 
Oh. See, yeah. Uh, oh, and I was gonna ask what uh, what, what Pokemon did you guys get? Got any personality tests? Mirror and Charmander. I wonder. If, I, oh no, this starts you off as like a much different. That starts off as a Charmander. Yeah, I played it way back in the day. I just never finished it. No, speaking yeah, of which, it was fun. It was different. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of starting off as a Charmander, uh, I was a Charmander. Okay. <laughs> what were you? I was a Mudkip. I remember I was a Cyndaquil. That's why. That's why I remember uh, Fire Bros. Smoke screen being so broken. And also, they made evolution really interesting, where you could only evolve in the post game, and it was so cool when you finally evolved to be like a Charizard walking around, or like a, a Swampert or a Blaziken. But you know what was especially cool about being in the game? What? So because you had to wait until the end of the game to do that, mm -hmm. you could only do that because until then you have to do everything through partner Pokemon. Oh yeah, they, you were you you started flying solo. Yeah. But with that, you can actually play as, you can recruit Pokemon when you're going through dungeons. Yeah. Any Pokemon rec you recruit, you can play as in the post game. Just You could play as Rayquaza if you wanted to. Like literally, if you recruit Rayquaza or like a Wailord or a Groudon. I remember or there's, there's a very famous Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Mystery Dungeon video where they hacked the game where they start as a Magikarp and their partner is Rayquaza. I, I would always, I would always call, call my team Team Pokeball. I like, I like calling it that because it was like, ha, they don't know what a Pokeball is. I, I, my, mine was always some sort of dirty joke. Like my most recent playthrough, I think we were Team Schlong. <laughs> Gross. I think mine was just like Team Victory or something. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Team Go Getters. Yeah. 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 From the uh, from, from the, the little anime special. special. Yeah. yeah. Those were so. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, who remembers these things? TV shows on the go, TV shows on the go, it's GBA Video, Game Boy Advance Video. These, these aren't even games, they're in the Game Boy. You're GBA the game. Video, do you remember that? No, I do not. So you could actually buy little Game Boy Advance cartridges, what they wouldn't work on the, on the Game Boy Player, so, but they had like one or two anime episodes or a movie or something on them. Yeah. yeah. I watch it at night when my parents told me to go to bed. I'm like, I'm gonna watch a Pokemon movie and like fall asleep. The crappiest video, like it only was, a step yeah, up. Was right now. Like a step up from a video now. I remember that. Pokemon box, the, the thing that New Yorkers and people in New Jersey are looking at you, some of you. Who goes to Jersey? No one. GameCube. ポケモンとスーパーガイデンガー。これで変わる。ああ、なんかいい図があるの。何かいい図があるの?ゲームボーイアドバンスとゲーム中。繋げばポケモンの可能性が更に広がる。対戦のベストメンバーを探したと。任
I and think they made them. Yeah, someone has made them where, where it's like they put a um, they they wire a um, a GameCube you know that has the um, the Game Boy player in it uh, yeah, uh, yeah. to a screen and have the flipper buttons and stuff. That's like so that. cool. Oh, that would be so cool. Uh, yeah. So why do you love this game? It's like oh you have to catch Pokemon yeah. by playing pinball, and, and you can still cool. actually collect all the Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Pokemon. And it's, and it's actually like a very intuitive system. You uh, you you uh, you travel during a pinball game, and you go to all the different like um, uh, biomes. Yeah. And, and you can catch all Pokemon in those biomes, and it actually works very well. Not to mention that it actually has boss battles in a pinball game. I mean, think about that. So like in Sonic's pinball almost. Almost, but you uh, but but it's more just like you're uh, you're just hitting things in the head. <laughs> it's a bonk. Bonk. Yeah, bonk. It's a lot of bonking. Now, I want to play that then. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Knock off Pokemon games, Pokemon Troze. Pokemon Troze. Move real fast now, don't go slow. You can shift and slide your favorite Pokemon in this new action-packed puzzle game. Line up four in a row and you're good to go. Pokemon Troze, rated E for everyone. They re-released it for the 3DS a while back. I mean, is that the puzzle game? Yes, it's like a Connect Four kind of. It, it became a, a, a Pokemon Shuffle is actually the the mobile game that Pokemon Troze is based on. Uh, so that nice. took off of, from Pokemon Troze. And then uh, we, uh, what else was another Pokemon game? Uh, that's Persona 3? Th 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 I loved I catching Latios and losing him as my Persona. Yeah. <laughs> it was so hard to fill up the compendium because I couldn't find Jirachi. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to fuse the direction. And then I guess it's a boss fight with Elizabeth in Persona 3 Portable and she has a f***ing Ricky Gigas. It's like that's not even out. <laughs> why, why do you have a Palkia? The sort of thing else to talk about, I mean we, we can talk about the, the e-reader. Do who remembers the e-reader? I don't. So yeah. Can you imagine, like, an e <laughs> can you imagine like an e-reader that's hooked up to like a credit card? <laughs> it's like every time you have to play a game you have to swipe your credit card. <laughs> Oh, I've heard, I heard, heard EA from two boxes. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront from two. Don't give EA any ideas. Oh no. So on that, that bombshell, is that even a bombshell? Oh, it's no. just a shame. It's, yeah, it's, on that shame, uh, should we give our final thoughts on the third generation of Pokemon? Last generation of Pokemon had great games, great soundtrack, great mechanics, great new Pokemon, A plus marketing. Uh, First time you could link with people wirelessly. Gen 3 was colorful, influential, and what? For me, Gen 3 was just very nostalgic and it launched me into liking Pokemon. So because of that, it always I'm always very biased for it. All I have to say is um, nothing makes me happier than watching a Ludicolo dance. <laughs> Pokemon Channel was definitely the apex of the series. I don't know, dude. I think Pokemon Box, if you could play it, yes. was. Oh, yeah. We'll love we'll, some Pokemon Box. <coughs> well, join us next time when we talk about the true apex of all the Pokemon generations Pokemon My Branch on the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. So, of course, I'm James. Uh, Y'all want to plug yourselves? Do you do, do YouTube stuff? Yeah, I, I have a YouTube channel. It's the Asian Sensation. I do Rubik's Cube stuff on there. I haven't been active lately, but I plan to in the future. What about you? Don't go to my channel, it has four videos, two of them are the same. I'll link it again! God damn it. <laughs> my name is Kenton, and you can find my stuff and the, in, the, in, the, in the description below at Flops. Anyways, this is Stuff We Play, your source for everything weird and retro, and I guess Pokemon, because we sure do like to talk about Pokemon. It's a lot of fun. Come join us whenever. We, we made a joke last time that uh, it'd probably take like 10 years to make this video, and now look yeah. at us three months later doing you it. You know what we should do? Every time we do a new retrospective, add someone new. So uh, like, for Gen 1, it was me and James. For Gen 2, it was James, myself, and Kenton. Gen 3, now we have Corbin. Yeah. Who do we have for Gen 4? I mean, I, I mean, 
Awesome. Right, comment, like, and subscribe to win a chance. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find someone for the Gen 4 retrospective. That's and coming we'll, out we'll, probably we'll in all the come summer. together. You'll, you'll be back, right? Oh, I'll, I'll all come together. I'll try my best. All yeah. come together. And okay, take, I'll take be here for you. Bye, everybody. So with that, thank y'all very much for watching. Stay classy. Have a uh, merry 2018. Yeah. If you know, no, just because I said that, just watch these files get lost. This video might go up to like 2026. X D D D D D. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, uh, that's how the tortilla folds, and uh, we'll see you later. Yeah, see so you. That took us. We started filming. It took us two and a half hours to film.